share my PPT or? We can share the PPT now, sir. We can share. We are live, bro, but uh, our test value is here. You can see the PPT, no? Yes, yes, I can see the PPT. Okay. I want me to uh, disconnect the slide or continue? It's okay, sir. I'll just uh, begin with the session. That's not a problem. Okay. okay. So, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. And uh, welcome to another session on, uh, and on this two-week uh, refresher in library sciences. Welcome to another session. And today, we are honored to have with us uh, Dr. Ramesh, uh, Professor Ramesh Chandragor. Uh, Professor, Professor Gore is a very old friend and a mentor of Ramanujan College. And he has been associated with Teaching Learning Center of Ramanujan College uh, in various capacities and as mentor, supervisor, and resource person for delivering a lot of lectures and organizing uh, very interesting programs and curating themes, good themes around the certain programs. So we welcome you, sir. Before I hand over the session to you, I would like to uh, brief my participants, brief the participants about, you know, the various accomplishments of Professor Gore. So Professor Gore presently is the director of uh, National School of Drama, which is an autonomous institute under Ministry of Culture, Government of India. He is head of department and principal executive officer of NSD, New Delhi, and its center is situated at Gangtok, Agartala, Varanasi, Bangalore, and also of TIE Wing, Srinagar, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, this is an additional charge to Professor Gore as he is permanently associated with Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, New Delhi, uh, as professor and dean academics. He has also been previously associated with the renowned organizations like JNU, TIFR, CSIR, IMT, M MDI, and RIS. A Fulbright scholar, uh, Professor Gore has visited over 24 countries, uh, to name a few, USA, UK, Australia, Russia, Germany, France, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Bhutan, uh, and many others in relation to various professional assignments. International and national honor, uh, honors and awards, Professor, uh, Professor Gore has received uh, and he has been honored with over 14 national and international awards. Some of the important ones include NCP, EDP, Emphasis, you know, uh, Universal Design Award 2017. He has also been awarded with Turnitin Global Innovation Award uh, 2017 uh, in USA. And uh, he has been honored with, uh, there has been an honorable mention category from Ro Royal Society of Chemistry India, Librarian's Choice Award, Award to Dynamics Librarian in India. Uh, and uh, recently, he has also been awarded the most fabulous Global Knowledge Management Leader 2020, awarded Global Knowledge Management, Cent uh, Management Congress and Awards. So we, as always, sir, we are very much honored and privileged that you accepted this invitation. And, uh, you know, you have uh, accepted to talk with the participants about the various facets of library sciences. So I request you to kindly take over the session. And I also request the participants uh, to actively engage in the session so they can ask, ask their questions uh, on YouTube channel and we will take up those questions in the end if time allows us. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Shubra. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are. So thanks for uh, invitation and for Ramanujan College, I'm always there because it is part of my uh, family. Always I consider uh, Ramanujan as my second office. Uh, so, first, congratulations on organizing this uh, very, very wonderful program. Uh, I see audio. Can are you getting me? Because I'm I'm finding some little uh, like your voice uh, was uh, breaking a bit. Uh, but I think now it's fine. Maybe some uh, if I if I switch on switch off my video now, is it better? I think yes. We can try with your video off. Uh, and if there's anything, I'll I'll uh, let you know. Yeah, yeah. If any problem, please. I am I'm putting my video off. Okay. So, uh, welcome participants, and I believe uh, this course is for library sciences, and uh, most of my uh, professional colleagues uh, are from library field. Uh, so I will consider this as a kind of train the trainers program, uh, and I will 
focus more on how you should uh, basically uh, prepare yourself to engage as a trainer in this uh, issue of uh, research and publication ethics as we all know that ugc is the controlling body and from time to time ugc organizes various kind of programs and activities in different uh, institutions regarding uh, having uh, policies and guidelines for uh, various technologies so in this regard when we talk about plagiarism or research and publication ethics ugc has also developed certain guidelines uh, for the same like research and publication ethic plagiarism uh, etc the first important landmark in this was uh, enactment of this regulation for plagiarism in 2018 which is uh, referred as promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism education institutions then ugc launched ugc care list uh, list of quality reference journals in 2019 uh, and third important thing was in december 2019 uh, a two credit course on research and publication ethic was introduced in uh, all universities and which is mandatory for all institutions uh, awarding phd degree and also apart from that uh, under the leadership of professor bhadnagar who was the then vice chancellor of uh, bhu a guidance document good academic research practices was prepared so uh, my request and suggestions to all of you that please uh, go through all these documents if you have already not gone it is mandatory and uh, one last first one which i uh, uh, i'm addressing now is the plagiarism regulation uh, regarding submission of electronic copy of thesis in ishod ganga repository Uh, so all these things are directly related to libraries and department of library science in universities and this is the primarily responsibility primary responsibility of library professionals guidelines and also uh, programs uh, like how to create awareness about plagiarism how to detect how to avoid so all this is something which is directly related to libraries and uh, you being a library professional should know or must know about all these issues now when we talk about plagiarism regulation 2018 which i was the key member of this committee which drafted these regulations this regulation is mandatory for all universities awarding phd programs uh, it has many parts and first part introducing various terminologies then uh, about organizing various kind of training and awareness on plagiarism and its uh, consequences then also how to detect plagiarism by providing various kind of plagiarism detection tools and uh, besides how to basically deal with the cases of plagiarism like if plagiarism is reported what kind of penalties and punishments and uh, uh, issues need to be addressed uh, there are two level of academic integrity panel departmental level academic integrity panel which investigate the case then you have institution level academic integrity panel which did lay down the penalties and also uh, uh, decide this co- this is punishable offense or not and this institution level academic integrity panel has to deal the cases based on these regulations where similarities up to 10% are excluded from any kind of punishment level 1 10 to 40% level 2 similarities above 40 to 60% level 3 similarities above 60% so uh, this is mandatory and based on this every university should develop a kind of guidelines and policy UGC care list is a, another very important thing is every librarian should know about it because you have to guide scholar where to publish what to publish so in this regard you have to 
uh, understood the various issues concerning UGC KL list, which is divided into two group, list group one, list group two. List group two is all about Scopus and Web of Science journals indexed in global databases. And group one is something which is not part of global indexing database, but uh, certain important journals, mostly in the discipline of art, humanities, languages, culture, and Indian knowledge system, which are uh, not included, uh, mostly Indian journals, but some foreign journals are also included. So in this context, I think we need to understand that uh, what is list one? Uh, list one is recommendation, your suggestions. Suppose you found that any journal which is a good journal is not part of list one. You can recommend to UGC journal cell uh, and that cell uh, having certain kind of procedure to uh, look into your request. If journal is of good quality, it can be included in the list by following certain parameters. But as a librarian, you should know because you have to guide your scholars in which journal we should publish. Because if they don't publish in the UGC care listed journal, then it will be a kind of like a violation uh, mostly because of you will not get research score for it. I mentioned about this document, uh, which is uh, a kind of guidelines or definition, introduction about various terminologies associated with uh, research integrity, like ethics, rigor, relevance, transparency, respect for intellectual property rights, impartiality, independence, accountability, so all these issues also need to be looked into uh, you by uh, uh, going through all these uh, terminologies. And that will help you in understanding various terminologies. Right? You also need to understand what is academic integrity or research integrity. Basically, uh, a broad definition like Thoughtful and honest adherence to relevant ethical, disciplinary, or financial standards in the promotion, design, conduct, evolution, and sharing of research. Or we can say that research integrity is the use of honest and verifiable methods in proposing, performing, and evaluating research, reporting research results with particular attention to adherence to rules, regulation, and guidelines following commonly accepted norms, course or norms. We all know that when a student do PhD, uh, there are various kind of guidelines given by UGC, by the university. And also there are a number of professional association who lay down these code of conduct, citation style. So all this comes under uh, academic integrity, all kind of those guidelines, code of conduct, norms, which deals with uh, ensuring quality research comes under academic integrity. When we do uh, this analysis of uh, this in detail, we need to understand uh, this is all about ethical guidelines, ethical rules. So we call it ethics in research. So ethics in research applied from day one when you choose a topic till final submission of the result or publishing of the research report. For example, when you talk about honesty, honesty in data formulation, honesty in data collection, uh, before that honesty in questionnaire design, honesty in data analysis, honesty in data publishing. So all these issues concerning objectivity, integrity, carefulness, openness, reliability, fairness, all these terms have different meanings and different steps in the research. So all these uh, issues, uh, it may be dealing with the copyright issues, use of various robust research, confidentiality, bringing out responsible publication, and also responsibility of the supervisor, high mentorship, uh, high standards in the mentorship and supervision, respect for your colleagues, respect 
for the student and also social responsibilities we all know that we have suffered from covid 19 few years before and many people believe that this covid 19 virus was leaked from some lab true this kind of research is against the society against the social responsibilities so we should not do any kind of research which which is harmful to the human kind or the society other issues like competence legality animal care human subject all this comes under ethics in research it's quite broad you it is better you understand all these research research but in case if you want to develop any specialization you must develop the specialization in ethics required or ethics related to a publication and that's why these ethics called research publication ethics so all kind of ethical guidelines norms code of conduct issues at the time of research report or article uh, or a thesis or a book dealing with various kind of errors or uh, research misconduct or scientific misconduct falsification fabrication and plagiarism these comes under research publication ethics issues such as co-authorship data ownership peer review system conflict of interest various kind of complexities of the funding permission and licensing policies use of various kind of images various kind of issues concerning human and animal subject so uh, simply speaking a set of common rules among authors editors reviewers and publishers to protect integrity of the scientific record based on consensus about standards and best practices ensures the integrity of the scientific ensure that reader can trust that what you have published what are your ideas and what you have borrowed from other sources a reader should know each and everything very clear let's try to understand this more in details there are certain issues which you need to understand like you also need to understand various kind of copyright issues all the copyright issues are different from the plagiarism but as a librarian it is important for you to understand all these intellectual property right copyright design layout design patent trademark trade secret all these things should be known to you because all these things are also related to publication or uh, research publications generally speaking uh, intellectual property right refers to creation of the mind such as invention literary and artistic works design and symbols names and images used in commerce this is a bio definition copyright is basically the law of the land how to protect the rights of a creator of the work and what kind of specific rights a creator of the work regarding reproduction regarding uh, derivatives of the work and various kind of uh, display and publicity rights so i will not go more into detail about copyright laws of india i am sure somebody will be speaking to you on this topic uh, you also need to know this uh, fair use uh, what is fair use like how much is fair so generally speaking fair use is uh, uh, looked in four uh, factors the purpose and character of the use the nature of the copyrighted work the amount and sustainability of the portion used in the relation to the copyrighted work as a whole and the effect of the use upon potential market for or value of the copyrighted works so basically when you say fair use fair use is calculated on the basis of these four four parameters when you are writing a thesis book or a publication or a monograph or a research article you require anybody's permission to quote 
court or quotation because right to court right of quotation or quotation right is one of the copyright exception provided by the one a convention article 10 so if you want to use any quotation from any publication in your writings you are free to do it you don't require anybody's permission right now coming to uh, there is kind of other issues which you should know like you should know what is public domain is all about you should know various kind of creative common licenses do it a common license allow a certain kind of use of material uh, without asking for permissions so in this context like by following creative common license you are giving rights to people make use of your resources without your permission so please understand difference between copyright and plagiarism copyright is about protecting rights of a creator of information it is to protect the unauthorized or unlicensed copying of a work subject to copyright laws of a country there may be possibility to different copyright laws on the same purpose plagiarism is using someone else work or idea without giving proper credit so plagiarism is a violation of academic norms but not punishable offense under ipc it has different kind of punish punishment copyright is applicable to only licensed contents and not necessarily author may not be necessarily the copyright holder sometime publisher may be so whomsoever is having copyrights is the copyright owner but in case the owner is the author the creator of that information he may not be the copyright holder but you have to acknowledge it so you have to acknowledge author creator not the copyright holder so uh let's uh, go more into details why do we do research to contribute or to extend knowledge how do we do this by building on the work of others means no research is possible without referring existing knowledge means whenever you want to do research you have to read a lot you have to understand the basic nitty gritty of particular subject so there is no harm in referring or reading you can read as much as you want the issue is start when you start writing your thesis you start writing your report you start writing your article at the time of the writing your research report or article or thesis or book you are place your research in the right context to show that you are aware of what else is happening through literature review to show that you understand where your work fits through paraphrasing summarizing or quotation so your report must contain an analysis of similar relevant work and when you are writing this report you have to make a clear distinction between what is your own original work ideas what is your opinion about the work of others the claims of others you are reporting and what is actually said by you through quotation verbatim a work can be idea description research data opinion pictures figure table oral written digital whatever means audio video it can be in any format right so why this distinction is important is because every report you write will not necessarily be a description of your own work novel original research sometimes you will write report summarizing existing research to solve well understood with existing solution and why this distinction is important because a reader examiner reviewer should clearly understand difference between your original work ideas and opinion of others and also the contents you have borrowed ideas you have borrowed from other sources and if you may fail to make that distinction you are committing error what is that error known as a research conduct 
misconduct means fabrication falsification plagiarism or any other practice that seriously deviates from practices commonly accepted in the discipline or in the academic and research communities generally in proposing performing reviewing or reporting research and related activities let's discuss these issues one by one fabrication fake data fake research fictitious research so fabrication is an academic fraud an intentional act of making up data or result and recording or reporting them so any act of fabrication faking data fictitious data number of examples are given due to paucity of time i may not able to give you uh, many example but uh, you have to understand that uh, you are from the library field uh you can find out many such examples uh, uh, from this slides and these slides can be shared with all of you these slides uh, my recordings are also available on my youtube channel so you can find out number of uh, such people so so uh, this academic fraud uh, like in academic uh, in social sciences a researcher interviewer completing a questionnaire or a fictitious subject that was never interviewed in the biological sciences the creation of data set for an experiment that was never actually conducted all these are intentional act it is also referred as intentional plagiarism because the person who is doing it very well know it it is wrong even then person is doing it is considered a kind of fraud and punishable offense uh, according to the rules regulations falsification is a kind of manipulation manipulating research materials manipulating equipment or processes or changing or omitting suppressing data or results without scientific and statistical justification such that research is not accurately represented in research record this would include the misrepresentation of the uncertainty during statistical analysis of the data so falsification is mostly about misrepresentation in the research various kind of misrepresentation falsification of uh, uh, there is kind of uh, manipulations all this comes under falsification this is also an academic fraud this is an also act of uh, intentional plagiarism person who is doing it very well know it because he or she know that this is not correct even then person is doing this is also considered a punish and uh, punishment is the as per the penalties as per the regulation is required now third thing comes plagiarism uh, which may be intentional accidental unintentional it has different types plagiarism an act of using someone else work without citation without credit you are using some quotation but you are not disclosing the right creator's name not giving the quotation in right format so all this comes under plagiarism falsification and fabrications are intentional act of plagiarism now let's talk about unintentional plagiarism accidental plagiarism something you don't want to do it but it is happening because of some ignorance carelessness and you don't know something like failing to document or cite properly quoting excessively when you are writing a research report or thesis or dissertation or a book the quotation should not be more than 15 to 20% because ideally speaking if you have lot of quotations then it is not original it will be lacking on originality parameters how to integrate ideas of others may not know how to take notes properly and unfamiliar with international style of documentation taking the ideas of other writers and mixing them together many time the good english publications are in english and we are not very confident in english writing so what we do we we borrow and copy the ideas from different sources and mix it up all these comes under unintentional or accidental plagiarism this can be avoided by proper detection editing etc self plagiarism is another type of plagiarism basically it deals with the use of your own material 
like you have published an article if you are using your article for other article text uh, without giving proper citation or pro without proper uh, following the rules it becomes self plagiarism in this context like you need to understand one thing that uh, ugc has also come out with certain kind of clarification uh regarding like uh, self plagiarism and this clarification was issued through a notification like reproduction in part or whole of one's own previously published work without adequate citation and proper acknowledgement and claiming the most recent work as a new and original for any academic advantage amount to tax recycling means self plagiarism all kind of issues of republishing same paper already published without citation slides uh, salami slicing all kind of like uh, reusing data without citation breaking up longer study in smaller parts all this comes under uh, self plagiarism there is only one exception in case of user generated material if you are a phd student and you are using your previously published article in the thesis it is allowed provided you should be the first and the topic the paper should have been published during the period of research on the topic of the research then and you are the first author then you can use uh, these papers in your uh, research thesis phd thesis but if you want to publish thesis as a book then you have to remove it there are number of uh, like uh, other issues uh, we need to understand regarding plagiarism minor plagiarism or major plagiarism minor plagiarism is all generally accidental or unintentional plagiarism where you don't want to do it but because of certain reasons unawareness a lack of knowledge lack of understanding and a poor scholarship you are doing certain things which are not ethically correct major plagiarism is all about falsification fabrication or repeated errors committing same mistake again and again or using a large portion of data so all this comes under uh, major plagiarism there are some more ethical issues uh, unethical issues in the research uh, while publishing a paper including a colleague as an author on a paper in return of a favor even though the colleague did not make a serious contribution to the paper discussing with your colleagues confidential data if you are a reviewer using an inappropriate strategy by passing the peer review all kind of piracy abuse of intellectual property right abuse abuse of research resources all this comes under uh, unethical practices duplicate publishing publishing same paper or substantially similar paper with or without citation it is also unethical submitting same paper simultaneously into two or more journal is also unethical a single research is divided in slices to increase publication count to get more recognition to get promotion this is also unethical ghost writing if you are using somebody it's taking somebody's help in writing by uh, wrong means this is also unethical in this case you also disclose it now many people believe this uh, plagiarism and ethical issues i don't think so plagiarism is punishable offense and there are penalties available in regulations and laws and you should be punished as per the rule regulations in ugc uh, this plagiarism regulation 2018 penalties have been clearly defined 
So in case if any case is reported in your university or college, you have to follow the guidelines given in UGC Plagiarism Regulation 2018. Many people believe or understand that now I got the degree, I'm free from all tension. No, this is not true. PhD is something even after uh, you are removed or revoked. And any point of time you can be in trouble because of plagiarism. Like this German education minister has to resign as well as her PhD title was revoked because she was found that uh, she used certain contents in her thesis which are not ethically correct. Similarly, some doctors in Abdulaziz Medical College in Jadda, they also uh, used the same thing and they were found. Uh, one of their paper was published in two different journals with different titles at the same time. So they did unethical practices and ultimately they were punished. This was a, there was a case, there is a lab in IM Tech, uh, Chandigarh CSIR lab, in which there is a, there was a scholar who went to South Korea and after returning from that place, he claimed that he did some wonderful research work. And based on that, seven articles were published in different journals. Later, it was found that it was a fake data. And uh, he was punished. Even his supervisor was also punished. Many the guides, they did say, uh, stealing of the data of their own colleagues. They were punished. A vice chancellor was also asked to clarify. Sometimes people can take extreme steps. Uh, in disgrace, they can uh, like uh, do something very, very highly uh, wrong. This gentleman, Sasai, was one of the 11 authors in one paper and one of eight in other papers. Both the papers were rejected means found plagiarized and in disgrace he committed uh, similarly in india there was an amphil student in veer narma south gujarat university and the investigation was going on against the charges of plagiarism in her amphil dissertation she committed suicide so please uh, be aware of that, that uh, this plagiarism is not in the interest of the research scholar, any staff, any faculty who is engaged in plagiarism. Plagiarism can put you in trouble at any point of time. So please don't do it in the interest of anybody else other than you. Publishers are aware of it. That's why this Committee on Publication Ethics was established in 1997. And these, this committee has prepared certain guidelines. And these guidelines uh, are available for both pre-publication checking as well as post-publication checking. And after the investigation, if it is found that plagiarism has been done, uh, if it is a case of minor plagiarism is submitted, it is the author is to be asked to rewrite. If paper has been published, author is asked to correct it. If it is major base case of plagiarism, in paper has been submitted, paper is to be rejected. If paper has been published, it is to be retracted. And same time, institute author also need to be, author of the institute also need to be informed by the publisher. So in this case, there are two kinds of punishment. One by the publisher, another by the institute. And generally, the punishment given by institute of the author is very high. There are a number of uh, such cases. Publishers uh, have different guidelines, and they publish in guidelines to author and also provide them their website. Cases of retractions are decreasing after 15th because of now proper awareness, more counseling, more education more training and also publishers are also well equipped. They generally don't accept anything which is uh, by uh, which is plagiarized or near to the plagiarism. So that's why cases are being reduced. Plagiarism detection, how to do it? Uh, you all know softwares, the best one uh, 
turn it in i think take it n urukun which is also known as original from the same company so in this case you need to understand that all this uh, 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 what kind of software we should use uh, we should have some kind of understanding of criteria generally i i am in not in favor of using any kind of open source plagiarism detection tool always use a good good detection software tool and plagiarism uh, is properly detected with highly qualified or good tools like turnit and authenticate even original urkund is also good what is the criteria of judging the quality of a plagiarism detection software first how many databases it is doing content matching like uh, this uh, turnit and authenticate they are connected with crossref and uh, they check with billion of billions of pages and journals and moreover it is also available in 27000 as uh, 27 languages so that's why i always recommend that we should use softwares for plagiarism detection also we need to understand various kind of uh, benefits and uh, limitation and disadvantages i don't see any disadvantages of such technologies it help in preventing plagiarism in number number of ways it help in peer review in uh, citation verification in the language corrections and also get uh, instant feedback about the contents it has some limitation like uh, cannot identify plagiarism line source mathematical formulas tables graphs and images uh, generally you can't check it through there are certain limitation but it's still better to use it we should also know what to be excluded while we are checking plagiarism while by we are detecting plagiarism everything is not plagiarism so exclusions include uh, there is kind of like uh, small matches bibliographies quotations and also uh, consecutive 14 consecutive words all this common all this is uh, not covered in plagiarism so may be excluded uh when you check any contents through software like turnitin or urkund this kind of report is generated this is from turnitin left side is the content right side is the similarities so you have to see that like uh, you have to check each and every similarity why similarities are there it is because of wrong citation incomplete citation or uh, any gaps in citation so in that if it is something related to other issues uh, it need to be looked into that so it is very much possible to check all the similarities and we must check each and every similarities one by one and must ensure 0% similarity because that is the limit but it may not be possible in many cases uh, because uh, of some common knowledge unavoidable things uh, common they like common materials and methods etc in such you see in plagiarism regulation uh, we have uh, allowed like uh, this up to 10% can be uh, without any punishment so if you have 10% similarities your thesis can be submitted or research article can be submitted in indian universities publishers have different parameters for it they don't go by this kind of parameters right so all these things should be known when you are detecting any plagiarism using softwares now the next thing comes how to avoid plagiarism plagiarism is very very uh, dangerous to your research your career your life so you have to avoid it simply be honest in writing should know the rules regulations guidelines ask all kind of academic programs on research methodology plagiarism and other issues must attend all such courses read as much as possible must understand and analyze how to take notes and uh, read articles 
you should have an account in plagiarism detection software, reference management tool software, research forums, online discussion groups, etc. This ORCID, which is very important for you to have an account, it's free. It helps you in enhancing the visibility. It also helps you in enhancing the quality of research. Academia, ResearchGate, uh, Faculty 1000, there are a number of uh, citation uh, databases which help in enhancing the visibility of research as well as in properly and keeping the files related to uh, all kinds of such uh, publications. Now, when you are writing a thesis or a resource report or an article, you need to understand how to integrate your sources, like various kinds of readings, books, journal articles, monographs, website, blog. There are so many things you keep on reading on a particular topic. Now, how to integrate it? And this integration is very, very important. In order to use a source effectively in your paper, you must integrate it into your argument in a way that makes it clear to your readers not only which idea comes from the source, but also what the source is adding to your the source is doing in your paper. What is the role of that source in your policy paper? Does your assignment include instruction on source use? Does the source provide context? Has the source shaped your argument? Does the source serve an authoritative voice? Does the source provide evidence of, for your claim? So many things. You need to understand it. Which part of source is relevant to your writings? How it is adding value to your writings? Please keep it in mind when you use multiple sources, uh, it may add the number of words, but it, it doesn't give quality to your writings. Writing a paper, make a draft, take help from others, seniors, learn and analyze. When you are using others' material, there are only three ways to use anybody else, books, journal, articles, or any kind of research contents, either like uh, quotations or paraphrasing or summarizing. What is summarizing? When you summarize, you provide your readers with a condensed version of an author's key points. A summary can be as short as few sentences or much longer. Depending on the complexity of the text and the level of detail you wish to provide to your readers. Even after summarization, you have to give you have to give credit to the original creator. You have to acknowledge this. So similarly, re-paraphrase. Paraphrase is a restatement in your own words of someone else's idea. It is it is not just by changing few words in between. You have to completely change the structure of the sentence by or changing the or synonyms or different forms of word or vice and perspective. You need not to change the contents, but the entire uh, rewrite in the uh, your uh, own language. Even after that, you have to cite the source. Quotation, it's very important using quotation. When, what is quoting, when to quote, how much to quote. How do I incorporate quotation in my paper? Quoting within quotes. How do I include long quotes in my paper? Single versus double quotation. Punctuating quotations. So all these things should be known to you. And it is very important that you should uh, teach your uh, students and uh, faculty also. When to quote, you should know and understand. The basic rule of thumb in all discipline is that you should only quote directly from a text when it is important for your reader to see the actual language used by the author of the source. How much? Anything. There is no limit. But when you are quoting up to 39 words, it should be in close quotation marks. If it is 40 words, stand alone without quotation marks and is indented five spaces from the left margin. Means you have to follow certain rules. but if you don't want to do it manually, learn tools like Mandalay and Note, etc. When to use signal quotation, when to use double quotation, when to punctuate quotation. All these things you should know. But if you are using automated citation, it, it is automatically taken care. There's something called common knowledge, which can be means you need not to cite it. But you should be sure about it. If you are not sure, better to cite it. 
Like smoking can cause respiratory disease such as infectious mind cancer. It is something you need not to cite. You are doing plagiarism in, uh, if you are doing group work, some assignments which are involving more than one people. Sometimes we will submit a single piece of work as a joint report. Sometimes we'll work together but submit separate report. In all cases, you have to give credit. This I have already explained that your PhD uh, thesis uh, articles published by you during the period of the PhD on topic of the PhD or uh, you are the first author can be included in this. Another very important point uh, as a librarian you must know and it is very important for you to understand that it is not just you know. You also need to make it aware to entire research community in your university or college. You should organize training program on what is cited source, what do I need to cite, what is bibliography, what is generative bibliography, what is the difference between reference and bibliography, what are end notes, what are footnotes, what is the difference between footnotes and end notes. All these things are very important for avoiding plagiarism and a researcher should be taught and librarian is the best person, library science professional is the best person to teach them. Because we all know that citation is simply uh, by giving credit to the source and uh, there are certain way of rendering of bibliographic details. And it has different citation styles and the citation style has different way of rendering. Like if you use MLA in this first reference, uh, year is in the end, but if you use APA citation, the year is along with the author name. So that's kind of difference uh, is there in citation style. But my recommendation is that don't use manual citation. You should uh, use or learn automatic citation tools. And as a librarian, it is must for you to learn all these citation tools. There are a number of citation tools, but popularly known as EndNote, available free with Web of Science. Mandalay is a open source till 12 gigabyte <laughs> but if you need a higher space then you have to subscribe it it has been desktop and web version it is also very important tool you need to learn and uh, you must you should learn and also you should train your research scholar regularly this should be this is part of your course curriculum for uh, research publication ethics training program and uh, it has number of good features like uh, annotator, library view, like putting everything in single window, your articles, published, your readings, or your future articles, past articles, everything can be put together in this. Then it is also having a very good PDF annotator. You can edit PDF files, putting highlights. I want to use this as a quotation, this as a summarization, this as a paragraphing. And when you are writing your thesis in MS Word, click on insert quotation. You will come to this window by Mandalay plugin. Select the quotation mark and insert quotation. Quotation will be automatically inserted, numbering generated. So all this is something very, very important for you. Jotero is another good software, but I always recommend Mandalay because I, I use Mandalay. Uh, there's something also you should know along with this, what is predatory journal. Uh, generally, these are the journals which are published under open access, lacking, lacking on legitimate parameters of quality and uh, uh, thousands of such predatory journals are published in all countries. This is a figure, 2,592. India is leading with this figure out of 3,000. Uh, there are a number of publishers uh, who are engaged in uh, money making through priority gold open access journals. So you should know, you should train, you should teach your scholar like uh, how to identify, how to avoid publishing in priority journals. If you want to know more about it, one of my talk is available on my YouTube channel, Professor Ramesh Shigod, where you can learn more about Predatory publishing and uh, how to choose a quality journal. That is also very important. Like uh, avoiding predatory journal and having a quality journal, there are a number of websites that also. 
so let me come to the conclusion or conclude as i uh, already mentioned in the beginning that this plagiarism is a kind of theft and it need to be stopped it need to be uh, proper counseling is to be initiated and you being a the library professional this is your major responsibility that you should first uh, become a trainer and you should learn more about uh, all these uh, research publication ethics scientific misconduct research misconduct and also it may be pedigree publishing or and uh, this is very very important for you uh, this is something uh, i just want to share with you but if you really want to know more about it you must join my youtube channel professor ramesh god you have lot of and even uh, previous ramanujan college training workshops i have been speaking very frequently and you can have some of the recordings available in ramanujan college uh, archive also so uh, with this uh, i just stop here and i uh, will be happy to uh, talk to you to have more question answer or if you have any question uh, please feel free to send uh, through chat box and also like uh, anything which you want to to email feel free whatever is convenient uh, i'm 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 fine with all of your like queries and questions and i have kept set some time for Uh, responding to your queries so with this i close it here and over to you uh, shipra and ashish thank you thank you so much sir uh, we will not take uh, a lot of queries uh, what we can do is we will collate if any other queries come and we can uh, send to you if anything else comes but we'll just take one question which was asked in between the lecture and one of the participants is asking what if one document is checked for plagiarism two times on the same software then what happens see if you follow the right parameter there should not be any problem result should be the same but many time like people commit errors or they don't put right setting like if in plagiarism in turnitin when you check the first time document if your settings include standard repository so in that case what happen like uh the contents are automatically saved in turnitin repository and when next time you will check it will show you 100% similarities so what you have to uh, you have to choose no repository similarly in urkund there are certain issues where when you check next time it shows similarity so it all about setting otherwise you check as many as times if you are making changes then similar report uh, different report will come if you are changing checking the same report like you check from turnitin or authenticate almost same report repository but there may be little variation because because of the content matching databases like content matching database in uh, original or kund are different then turnitin will show you higher similarities but original or kund will show you the less similarities because urkund is not checking through cross ref so in that context similarities may be vary from software to software because of number of parameters and one of the important parameter is content matching like uh, that particular software what are the content matching databases accessible to that particular database okay thank you so much sir as always uh, the session has been quite informative and since i was uh, sitting with you for the session i learned quite a few things uh, i've always enjoyed your lectures and uh, today also i learned quite a few things uh, from the lectures so thank you so much you are anyway always a part of ramanujan college so it's always a happy feeling to have you with us thank you so much once again and i really hope the participants enjoyed the session thank you shipra thank you ashish and thank uh, you sir the very best and uh, we'll meet soon thank you sure, sir okay bye bye hey bye bye sir